This is a Graceless Audio presentation from Southern California professional Christian counselor Bill Ferris. You can learn more about Bill and his counseling, speaking, and writing ministry at BillFerris.com or by visiting him on Facebook at Bill Ferris MPC. And now here's today's Graceless Audio message. Hi, this is Bill Ferris with another Gracelets Audio on this topic of transitions. I'm calling this little uh, two-part series, Constant Change is Here to Stay. And uh, in the first part, uh, I hope you'll go back and listen to that if you haven't already heard it. I talk about the three phases of transition, identifying them as the leaving or ending phase, the neutral zone is phase two, and the new beginning phase is phase three. Now, these come from a gentleman named William Bridges, who has written on this topic and teaches on this topic extensively of transitions. But we said that transitions are different from changes and that transitions are about the inner processes that go with change. And change, we're saying, are the exterior uh, observable parts of the process of change. But this uh, this topic of transition is hugely important. I, I'm told it's some of the most helpful things I teach. And so I'm excited to get into this second part of the Graceless Audio uh, podcast here so that you can uh, join us here in the neutral zone. We've, we've, we've covered the, the first phase in the first, uh, in the first podcast, and now we're in uh, the second phase of transition, the neutral zone. I've introduced that as that second phase of change and transition where it's a little bit of the wilderness experience, where it's the, uh, you know, not what, what I was and I'm not what I'm going to be. I'm in that in-between place. Or this could be, a, if it's happening to your family, you know, we're not what we used to be and we're not what we're going to be, but we're in that middle zone. It's a little undefined. It's a little disconnected. It's a little disorienting. We're not... We don't have it all dialed in yet, but we're in motion, we're in change, but we might have to wait for a while or, or see how things are going to turn out or, or, or start some new initiatives, you know, in order to get through this neutral zone. So here we are, we're in phase two of the transition process. Now, I, I want to tell you, you might be in the neutral zone if you have recently changed your address, for example, or you have recently changed your last name and that maybe you, you recently got married. Uh, you have recently changed jobs or roles at work, or you've recently changed social status or undergone a financial crisis or a financial boon or taken on a big new project or ministry or started or closed down a business or switched careers gone back to school, moved churches, endured an accident, or undergone a health crisis. I mean, all of these things propel us into a uh, a letting go, a leaving stage, a, 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 an emptying phase, and into that awkward middle, that neutral zone, that wilderness of change where we go, hmm, I'm not really sure where this is all going yet, but here I am, and there's no way to be anywhere different. Now, the neutral zone is the space between our old identity and our new identity. It's the space between our old surroundings and our new one. It's the space between our old relationships and our new relationships, our old vision and our new reality, uh, our old familiar and our new normal. It's kind of like a hallway between an old room you've been living in and the new room you're going to occupy. You know, you don't exit the old room like in a hotel, sometimes how rooms are joined together by just a doorway and you step out of one room directly into the next room. It's not like that. It's like you step out of the old room and you're into this hallway. And in this hallway, nothing is normal or familiar for a little while. It's like you're brushing your teeth in the hallway. You're making your bed in the hallway. You're cooking your meals in the hallway. It's awkward. It's weird. It's disorienting because you've left something behind. You've started into that transition, but you're not yet into the new New beginning and what it's all going to look like in the new normal yet. And so you're in this strange middle place. And that can be very upsetting and disorienting for people. It can also be an important time of 
of uh, personal inventory, when you're in a place like that, you start to kind of think about, well, what do I really need? And what do I really love? And what do I really care about? And what's important? What isn't important? And what did I think I needed to kind of take with me into this transition that maybe I don't? And what are some things that I wasn't thinking I needed to take in this transition with me that I really need to go kind of get and bring in? So there's all kinds of conversations and sifting and thoughtfulness and prayer that happens in the neutral zone. And it's a powerful time of in, in the whole transition process. I mean, think for a minute of a specific time in your life when you've walked the sands of the wilderness, when you've been in that in-between place, that neutral zone. How did it affect the way you prayed? What kinds of prayers did you pray from the wilderness, the neutral zone, that were different? from the prayers you prayed from either the leaving phase or the new beginning phase. What helped make that neutral zone, that wilderness bearable for you? Or what is one way you personally grew from going through that experience of uh, crossing through the wilderness or the neutral zone on your way to a change and transition in your life, a new normal that eventually emerged? Let me give you some biblical quotes from the neutral zone. Listen to this one from Job 3.25 and 26. Job says, What I feared has come upon me. What I dreaded has happened to me. I have no peace, no quietness. I have no rest, but only turmoil. Boy, that sounds like a, a statement from that wilderness, that neutral zone. Solomon said, Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What does a man gain from all his labor at which he toils under the sun? That's from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verses 2 and 3. Or how about David in the Psalms, Psalm 130, verses 5 and 6, where David says, I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. You know, there's that sense in the neutral zone of having to wait, of not having all the answers or understanding or all the picture dialed in yet. Or the psalmist in Psalm 137, verse 4, who says, How can we sing the songs of the Lord while we're in a foreign land? I mean, this is a reference to the captivity of the Jewish people in Babylon, you know, that, that being taken from their, their land and, and their identity as, as the, the people of God and planted in their, in their own land in Canaan and then being swarmed and captivated by the Babylonians and carried off to a foreign land where they did not belong and they don't recognize the the you know the food or the architecture or the authority and 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 there's they're being told hey sing us the songs of zion and they're going how can we sing the lord's songs when we're in a weird place we're in a we're not in zion we're not in canaan we're not in our land we're in a foreign place and it's awkward to sing the lord's songs here you know or mary magdalene and i love this one this is from john 20 verses 13 and 14 she says at the tomb of Jesus on the first Easter morning, she, she, she's in distress and she says, they have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize it was Jesus. Boy, I'll tell you, when we're in that wilderness place, when we're in that neutral zone, when we're in that awkward middle of transition, the Lord could be right there working in our lives, present to our lives, and we don't even see him. We don't even recognize him. We go, where did Jesus go? Where did God go? What happened to my faith? What happened to my walk? What happened to the Lord's voice in my life? What happened to my sense of being close to God? Oh, man, it's all gone. Well, welcome to the wilderness. That's kind of classic, you know? And so... In some cultures, there is sort of a built-in recognition that this is a normal part of the life stages and transition process in our lives, that there is a sort of an in-between, you know, an initiation sometimes is offered to help people identify when they're crossing over, leaving one phase of life and entering into another. You know, in the Hebrew culture, the Jewish culture, it's the bar mitzvah. You know, a, a young man is told, okay, you, you, you've crossed over from being a child into being a young man now, and you're expected to 
know things and 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 take a stand for the community in certain ways that go with this this transition this change this crossover that you've done uh think about some of the great tales you know the great classic stories i i love the lord of the rings and jrr tolkien's uh fantastic landscapes that really give us lots of life lessons about change and transition for example when the company of the people on the way to complete their appointed mission find that they have to cross through what's called the mines of moria they got to go underneath a mountain into some very dark and scary places that they don't really have a map for in order to get to where they're going you know that's a great illustration of that wilderness that neutral zone that sense of uh awkwardness that comes with change and transition we got to go where there's no map we got to go through the darkness and we got to figure out what's ahead somehow trusting in god uh two common responses to entering this neutral zone this wilderness this awkward middle is to try to go back to, to return to the old familiar you know the old familiar you know it, how is that working for you you know it's it's really hard if not impossible to go back to the familiar to to find comfort in the good old things that we used to know when we're in that transition and change process or sometimes people try to just sprint through the wilderness sprint through the neutral zone and get to the new normal get to the new beginning as fast as possible i know i've seen this happen for example when someone is bereaved and they've lost their their spouse and and they and they haven't been used to living in the uh, uh you know the bachelor or bachelor bachelorette life you know the a life of a widow or a widow widower and 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 suddenly you know they they quickly you know get attached to a new uh partner a new a new marriage partner or a new partner to to just erase that awkward feeling of being alone you know i want to hurry up and fill that space with somebody you know sometimes that can be a, an example of how we try to sprint through the wilderness you know get to that new normal we don't like that awkward middle but the neutral zone bridges tells us that's an important space to, to try to figure out how to use in the transition process. He says, it's where we do some of our most important inward work. Like in that wilderness, that's where we learn to really wait on and trust in the Lord. In that wilderness, that's where we really reconnect with our deepest longings. In that wilderness, that's where we, we, we prepare for a new beginning for retooling and retraining and recalibrating. Sometimes people go back to school. Sometimes people do other things to recalibrate, retrain, retool their life when they're in that wilderness, that middle phase, that neutral zone. They, they use it as a way to uh, prepare themselves for a new normal. Um, in that neutral zone, that's where we unleash our sanctified imagination. That's where we say, God, show me, paint the picture for me of what could be if I really allow you to take me through this transition, through this wilderness uh, with, with all my heart and soul. In that neutral zone, we're going to grieve losses there. We're going we're gonna to experience the grief of having gone through that ending phase, that leaving phase, that phase one of, of change and transition that put us into the neutral zone phase two, we're going to oftentimes find ourselves grieving our losses and our, and our let goes there. And also in that neutral zone, that's where we gather the resources we will risk in making a new beginning. And so let's then talk about that new beginning. This is phase three of the transition process, the new beginning. And uh, the new beginning emerges from the ending phase and the neutral zone that precede it. Now, this is something that Bridges really helps us understand that usually new beginnings don't all of a sudden appear fully formed out of nowhere and go, da, 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 this is your new beginning. This is how it's all going to look from now on. This is the new normal. It all appears at once, you know, not usually like that. Usually it sort of trickles out of the neutral zone or out of the wilderness. Listen to this. We forget how indirect and unimpressive most new beginnings really are. And we imagine instead some clear conscious steps that we ought to be taking. When we are ready to make a new beginning, we will shortly find an opportunity. I love that. Listen to that one, one more time. When we are ready to make a new beginning, we will shortly find an opportunity. 
So it's it's often indirect and unimpressive, he says, uh, to go from that neutral zone into that new beginning. But it does happen when we're ready. Um, some common characteristics of this third phase, this new beginning phase of transition. Well, well, first of all, there's a first hint of it via an inner idea or an external opportunity. Like, you know, you're, 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 you're struggling through the wilderness and then all of a sudden there's an opportunity that comes that opens a new door for you and you go, oh, that's the way forward. Oh, that's the next step. Oh, that's the new normal. Or you get a new idea, a new inspiration, or a new vision of what could be. And you go, oh, that's the direction I need to be moving in. Okay, here we go. We're going to push toward that and maybe go, you know, go back to school or I'll, you know, start this new relationship or I'll learn this new ministry or whatever it might be. Uh, another characteristic of a new beginning is an image or a vision of yourself in a new role, a new identity, a new situation, or a new activity. Hey, I've always wanted to learn how to ice skate. You know, hey, I've always wanted to learn how to ride a horse or whatever, you know. And so we go through that process of going, okay, I could see myself, you know, uh, changing my career. I could see myself learning this new skill. You know, I could see myself stepping out into this new ministry, whatever it might be. Or a random inspiration that sticks and grows. Suddenly we find ourselves really meditating on an inspiration that we got. And we go, maybe that's the Lord speaking to me. Maybe that's really from him. And we start to think and cogitate and, and, and kind of feed an inspiration that we get. Or a successful interior realignment between what I am and what I do. We call this sometimes convergence or finding my sweet spot. You know, when that happens, there is a sense of new beginning that shortly emerges or a sense of things opening up or surging with new energy or new types of challenges and obstacles to overcome or conclusive negotiation with caution and fear and doubt and the opinions of others. When we sort of give ourselves permission to move on and we're ready to just kind of get over the doubts and fears and even the opinions of others and just go, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to go for it. A set of new messages coming from people important to us who say, hey, I, I think you're moving into something. I, I see, you know, you're, you're really coming into your, 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 your sweet spot. You know, I see that, you know, that, that idea that you've had about changing your life that way. I, I really want to affirm that. That just really looks like a fit for you. And so that propels us into that new beginning. Or the recognition of opportunities that suddenly seem within reach. Like stuff just starts to show up and we go, whoa. I see these opportunities. I never saw them before. Where did that come from? Bridges says that genuine beginnings begin within us. Genuine beginnings begin within us. And so these new beginnings, they, call, they come often as a response to one of four things. These new beginnings often come as a response to one of four things. One of these is a call. I have discerned that God has been preparing me for a particular role or identity or task or change that he is now calling me to engage. Or it might be a vision. I have discerned a new way of seeing myself or my role or my task in life, one that is connected to my deepest desires and longings, a new life stage or something like that. Or it might be an assignment. In one way or another, I've been assigned a new role, a new environment, a new, uh, a new mission, whatever it might be, or a sense of timing. I have come to believe it to be the right or the ripe time for me to act on a call, a vision, or an assignment I've received. So again, these four things are oftentimes the, the, the generators of new beginnings, a call, a vision, an assignment, or a sense of timing. So think now for a second of a particular time of new beginning you have experienced. Name one way your life became different from how it was before. Just one way your life became different from how it was before. What was one thing about it that surprised you as you entered into that new beginning? And what, you know, what's, what's one way you saw yourself differently? on the other side of that wilderness experience. When you left the old normal, you went into the wilderness and you engaged the new beginning. How, how did you change? How did you see yourself differently? Here's some biblical quotes from the land of new beginnings. You know, the psalmist said in Psalm 116, verse 7, Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. Or Psalm 16, verses 5 and 6, Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. 
The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. Or Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 10 says, But by the grace of God I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. And so this is the uh, emotional content or the emotional conversation of finally getting through the wilderness and into that promised land, into that new beginning, into that new normal. You know, and, and we say, oh, praise you, faithful God. You know, you, you, you took me through it all, you know, and here I am. I've landed in the new normal and I like it here, you know, or we might go, okay, God, here goes. I'm ready to engage. I don't know what it all means yet, but, but I, I feel like it's beginning. I feel like it's emerging. I feel like the, the time is now and I'm, I'm here goes, you know, or, you know, it might be, hey, that was crazy, but I made it. Hey, we made it. We made it through this change. We made it through this transition. It was crazy, but we made it. Or is this for real? Can I trust this? Or just plain, wow, you know, or I knew this would turn out okay. Yeah, I knew. I knew the whole time it'd be fine. It'd be okay. I always knew it. You know, we kind of lie. Uh, or, hey, this should be interesting. You know, we get fascination going again. And so these are all uh, three now of the phases of change and transition process that we will move through in big and small ways, different intensities, different durations, different uh, uh, environments, different outcomes. But in, in, in case after case in our life, we will go through these three cycles of transition in our relationships, in our, in our spiritual life, in our, in, our, in, our, in our career, in any number of ways, our health, so on. We will go through the ending phase, leaving things behind, Every new beginning begins with an ending, going into that neutral zone, that wilderness of change where we're disoriented and it's a little discombobulated, but, but we're into the transition. We're moving through it and we're, we're, we're learning to wait. We're learning to pray. We're learning to trust until we see the new normal. And then when the new normal comes, that phase three, that new beginning phase, we engage, we embrace, we say yes, we move forward, we adapt, we uh, re-engage, you know, and we start to say, okay, God, you, you took me through, you, you, you got me through, and uh, Lord, let it be to your glory that I'm in this new beginning or that we're in this new beginning as a family or as a church or as a business or whatever it might be. And so these are the three phases of transition. I hope to uh, have helped you in your own life and in your own transitions by sharing them with you today. And uh, thank you for listening to Gracelet's Audio. And remember, if you didn't hear the first podcast uh, that that talk about the beginning phase and so forth, please go back and listen to that. It'll all make a lot more sense to you then. Thanks so much. Talk to you soon. This has been a Gracelet's audio presentation from Bill Ferris, MPC. For more brief and full-length audio messages from Bill, visit his page at Spreaker.com. And don't forget to share your comments with Bill by writing him at BillFerris at BillFerris.com. Thanks for listening.